Hey everybody, I'm Robert and I'd like to welcome you down here to the Apex Barn. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that you guys have actually brought up and that topic is why all the hate for the AMGs or why don't you have an AMG in the garage? Robert, what's so bad about AMG? Why you don't have one? Do you hate Mercedes? Do you dislike Mercedes? I get probably, I would say a good 30 messages a week asking me why I don't have a Mercedes product in the garage. And I figure today, since you guys asked so much, I might as well answer that question. Um, this, this whole line of questioning may have been sparked and ramped up over the last couple of weeks because you've been seeing uh, a lot of cars that have been left here by Tim uh, in terms of the AMG GTR Pro and then his SLS Black Series. So maybe it's kind of triggered a little, a little bit of a response. But the reality is, is that for me, I like to use my cars not as daily drivers, but I prefer to use them on the Nordschleife. It's something that has really affected the way that I buy cars and what I buy cars. I originally built a, house, a garage at my house where I could keep all of my cars and, and I got to a point where I just didn't enjoy driving them on the road and now my garage sits empty because I keep all the cars up here. Um, and there's opportunities for me to take cars back to the garage and I don't want to because I want them at the racetrack. And I think that's really leads you into the best answer I can possibly give. Up until this point, I don't think that AMG has built a car that would suit me for racetrack use or for even performance driving use the way that I'd like to see it happen. There's a couple things that I have, uh, let's talk about performance wise and then maybe vanity wise that I feel uh, uh, need boxes that need to be checked. When I look at a car, I open the garage door, I walk in, it needs to look like it's ready to go on track. It needs to look aggressive. The 675 is aggressive. The GT2, now that it has the Manti Racing Kit is aggressive. I've complained for years that a, a turbo, a Carrera, a 911, uh, uh, whatever, a GT3 RS and a GT2 RS looks so similar that there's not enough differentiation between a base model and the, the cream of the crop limited edition models. And that kind of drives me nuts. The Manti Racing Kit took it to a whole nother level. And I think now the GT2 looks aggressive and it looks like, okay, when you walk in, you realize that that car is developed for motorsport. It's designed to do something and it's going to be a serious car. Up before then it didn't. I look at some of the old pictures of the GT2. I'm like, oh, that's cute. You know, it obviously is an amazing car, but it looks so similar to the other models. AMG, on the other hand, has G wagons and AMG, uh, whatever you want to call it, limos and and all these different things. And they might be cars that are great if you want to drive daily drive to work, or if you want to flex, or if you want to get the biggest G wagon four by four lifted up and drive up and down the street in the middle of London or something like that. It's a great car for that, but it has no place for me, no place for me in the garage and definitely no place on the racetrack. As Mercedes has continued through the different generations, they've been building different things that have a lot of power. They've got a GT four door and things like that, but still that's not a track car. You would destroy that car in the Nord Schleife. There's no way you could drive a GT four door like you do an M3 with four doors and run it as hard as it is and have them last. And it's not about quality, it's about weight. The simple weight of what you're pushing around, the power, you're gonna destroy front tires and things like that. It just doesn't make any sense. So the first car that AMG built that has started to transition and get out of that era is the GTR. So the GTR came out and when I first saw it, I said, you know what, this is actually pretty cool. This is starting to go in the right direction but it still looked very similar to the GT. See, they've got a GT, GTS, GTR, GTR Pro, and they just do little changes along the way. And that never makes somebody like me feel like, oh my word, I have to have that car because it's little changes. Okay, yeah, well, they put a little bit bigger front splitter on. Oh, they put a neat, cute little wing on the back. It doesn't make a change enough for you to grab your eye and feel like, wow, this is a huge difference. The things that they did performance wise, obviously they made more power. They put some aero upgrades that definitely helped the car. And they put some spherical bushings on the GTR as well. The spherical bushings on the back, basically what you do is you have a control arm and that's connected to the chassis and your bushings are in there. And if those bushings are not strong enough, they'll flex and your wheels out here and your actual control arms will move around under braking and acceleration and different things like that. And when they put lower rear control arm spherical bushings in, it fixed it. So now those control arms do not move in relationship to the chassis and that keeps your alignment perfect and obviously gives you a better feeling, better feedback when you're driving on the racetrack, on the Nürburgring, etc. So they did that in the GTR and I thought that was a huge upgrade, but they only did that on a couple control arms. I think it was the lower rears, 
uh, they did it and that's because that's a hard one because you're getting power pushing the control arms forward then you're getting braking pulling the control arms backward and those control arms are flexing and those are most often in cars the first bushings to go bad uh, in the control arms so they did that and i thought that well that this is an amazing upgrade this is a very good start then they came out with the gtr pro and the gtr pro now went to control uh the the spherical bushings all the way around in the control arms yet another step forward they put a bigger front splitter they put bigger uh, front flicks if you would to control the airflow they're taking the high pressure out of the wheel wheels by letting that high pressure come out of these uh, fender louvers and again they made the car look more aggressive they put a, a, a roll cage in it a bolt-in roll cage from the factory um, obviously you've got the wing on the back little steps but if you got used to the GT you got used to the GTS you got used to the GTR now you see the GTR Pro it's just little increments all the way along and it never made me feel like looks wise that it was that that dramatic now this is a car that I'm going to drive uh, very soon you're going to see a video on it I'm actually going to drive this back to back with the SLS Black and it's something I'm very excited to do um, we're going to take them on the Nordschleife and I'm going to get to give you guys my opinion of the two but this car right here is at the nearly at the level that I would almost buy it um, I would almost buy this car but the reason that I wouldn't is because now I know that the GT Black is going to be coming out. So the AMG GT Black is going to be coming out. You're going to probably start seeing videos on this, I would say, even as early as this weekend, starting into next week. And it's going to be absolutely amazing car. We've seen it driving around the Nürburgring. What does it have? It has a big ass wing on the back. You can call me a ricer. You can tell me whatever you want. It's got a big wing on the back. That means it's ready for the racetrack, right? <laughs> but in all seriousness, I believe that the, that the GT Black is going to be the first car that has the Black Series badge on it that AMG Mercedes has built to be specific for the racetrack and is going to really excel on the racetrack. It's going to be, in my hope, is dedicated directly for that. I think they're not going to be able to get away from this refined interior, beautiful carbon fiber work and things like that. And I'm okay with that. I can, I can live with that. I think that's going to be a nice balance. But I think it's going to be the first car that AMG has been on the Nordschleife with for years. We have seen this thing just doing thousands of laps and driving around in all of its camouflage. I've seen the front, the aggressive, uh, the aggressive front end, I think even larger front flicks, a bigger front splitter. I think there's gonna be some really neat things on that car that are finally going to make me say, wow, maybe this is what draws me into the brand. We'll see what happens. So keep an eye out for that. There's a very good chance that I will end up with an AMG GT Black no guarantee, but a good chance because it's something that I've definitely had my eye on as it's been testing around the Nürburgring. And furthermore, I hope you guys stay tuned. Um, this is going to be interesting for me. Tim's going to let me take out the GTR Pro and the SLS Black, do a back-to-back -back comparison between them. We were talking about doing it last week on the, the GP track, and unfortunately, due to closures and things like that, we couldn't make it happen. Um, but I'm very interested to see which one I like more. I think it's going to be kind of interesting because this is obviously built for the track, but of all of the AMGs other than what's coming out, which is the GT Black, I think the SLS Black Series is probably my favorite car that I've seen. The sound of the motor, just the emotion, the look of how the doors pop up and everything. I think it's gonna be a really cool car. So a lot of you guys have been asking me if I'm shopping for a, a SLS Black. No, I'm not. I've been on uh, mobila.de and these different websites. I've definitely looked at them, but I've not. Uh, not been uh, inquiring into purchasing them yet. Every time Tim goes to the garage that has how many, what, five of them lined up, he asks if I want one. Uh, so I think all of you guys are kind of pushing me in that direction, but I still want track cars. I still have my fingers crossed that the GT Black is just the one from AMG. We'll see what happens. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of look into my thoughts on AMG, this car, and uh, what's coming. And lots of cool stuff coming up on the channel. Thank you guys again for the support, and we'll catch you later.